So, so Stephanie, do you think that people have just put the inflation worries aside for now? Uh, you know, I think that, uh, again, it was really more of a momentum-driven bounce to me. Uh, you know, the fundamentals, I have to say, on the inflation side, right now, while the CPI did pick up, the real pressure is on the input side. And that's probably going to persist because you still don't see the household's ability to absorb substantially higher inflation. So right now you've got the CPI running basically a full percentage point below the PPI on a year-on-year -year basis. And that is really a margin squeeze for corporations if their input costs are going up faster than their ability to pass them on. So I think we need to see where that flushes out. But right now, it's really an input story. So I think the market, the bond market, may have overreacted to inflation because if it remains in the pipeline, it's really not as big a problem for the Fed. This has been the issue so far, is that it, we've seen these increases in PPI inflation that haven't been able to really translate through. And I don't see that dynamic changing. The, I'm just wondering about if you see any uh, hope here on productivity improving. It's been terrible. Yeah. We're now getting more investment, I think, because of the tax cut. Uh, this is obviously a way that companies could pay people more without it being inflationary, is right. if those people are producing more stuff. Yeah, it doesn't seem to me like you're you're getting much evidence of that. I mean, I think what we're seeing right now, again, is you get companies announcing that they're going to use this money for share buybacks more than you see any real increased appetite for CapEx. And I guess on the productivity side, so much of it gets into that whole larger debate about automation and, you know, whether that ends up being a net positive for employees or not, um, you know, is another raging debate. Um, so, I, you know, I guess what I keep coming back to is what is going to drive this 3 percent growth forecast? CapEx is only going to increase if consumer spending is there to meet the, you know, increase the demand for the products that companies are Even with are gonna... the extra money saved after the tax plan. Well, your, your poll, I'm jumping ahead here, yeah. but your poll asks people what are they going to do with the tax cut. And 61 percent are either going to pay bills or save it. I think only 8 percent said they were actually going to spend the tax cut. Mm. So I think your poll really speaks loudly to the situation households are in. They, they don't have as much discretionary spending to throw around. There, I just, I just wanna, I, I want to point out this headline that we're getting right now. Qualcomm is rejecting Broadcom's latest offer of $82 a share. Uh, Qualcomm and Broadcom obviously have been talking about a deal. Is that one place that you think companies will spend money on deals, Stephanie, given the fact that we are seeing the savings from the tax? Yeah, plan? we've seen a ton of deal activity. And I think, you know, when you think about the broader inflation picture, that's a that's really setting the kindling for a major inflation problem down the road because you're setting up these oligopolies and monopolies in industry after industry. And obviously, at some point, you know, Amazon, for example, can say, you know what, we're going to raise prices at Whole Foods. Uh, we own the whole market now, so we can we can do that. Um, so, I mean, obviously, that's that's <laughs> not do, the yeah. direction they're but, going right but now. But Amazon they... has been disinflationary to Absolutely. this point, right? For yes, sure. but I think what they're doing is they're smart. They're setting up basically these oligopolies in various sectors, okay. and at some point, they control the market. You, no, know? you can't raise prices at a, a supermarket like that that treats the, treats, it treats the customers so badly, and it's quite frankly <laughs> in need of a massive overhaul. But you raise the, the issue of the Federal Reserve. So you don't think that consumer inflation is as big of a problem that the bond market overreacted to the Fed potentially raising short-term interest rates faster. However, you do have the Federal Reserve that's reducing its balance sheet, that, the, that, it's, that built-in demand that the bond market has had, that the Treasury market, the U.S. Treasury, has had for um, bonds and, and shorter-term instruments for years is disappearing. Right. And that balance sheet, it, they're going to let 400, more than 400 billion, billion dollars, 420 yep. this year roll off. Doesn't that automatically send longer-term interest rates higher? Well, I think there are two sides of the story. Uh, one, I think it's cru this is the story, in my view. You know, we've been focused on fiscal policy and the tax cut 
to the exclusion of what's happening on the monetary side. Right. And 420 billion, you know, the multiplier on the Fed's QE, the increase in the balance sheet, was about 3.7 times. So every dollar they expended their balance sheet credit increased three dollars and seventy cents and that has a huge ripple effect through the economy obviously because this economy drives on credit fuel in the tank so as they're taking 420 billion out i mean it's probably incorrect to assume that math works the same in reverse but we're talking about what would be one and a half trillion dollars in reduced credit growth which is huge for an economy that actually is consuming more credit to go each additional mile um, so that's a huge story that no one's really talking about. And the idea is we don't have to worry about it because it's been clearly telegraphed, it's quantifiable, it's on a schedule, and therefore it somehow doesn't have an impact. And I think that's totally wrong um, and that the decrease in credit growth is going to be a huge headwind for the economy that really offsets a lot of the stimulus from the tax cut. Does it result in a deflation or a basically a bursting of these asset bubbles? Because again, it was all this monetary right. policy. It resulted in asset bubbles, but it never really wound up in the pockets exactly of the people right. who gr we grew up with, any of like the real people in this country. Exactly. Does it hurt, the, hurt them or does it just hurt the speculators? Well, I think there are two, there are two prongs to this. Obviously, there's the QE, QT part now and the interest rate part. And on the quantitative tightening, I think, you know, clearly QE was designed to s increase credit mm -hmm. and spur the appetite for risk by punishing people for seeking safety in cash. So why wouldn't QT do exactly the opposite? It would reward people for being less uh, risk mm -hmm. uh, or more risk averse, let's say. Yeah. Um, they would favor cash versus buying a junk bond at 6%, mm -hmm. um, and it would reduce the supply of credit. On the consumer, on the economy side, they have been feeling the impact of higher rates since the Fed started tightening in 2015. But, you know, for all of us who traffic on Wall Street, we've been watching high yield bonds, investment grade bonds go down in the face of Fed tightening and treasuries basically go nowhere. So we view tightening has had no impact. Meanwhile, consumer debt service has moved up sharply because mortgage rates, credit cards, auto loans, all of that has followed the tightening. So I, I would say the, the supply side stimulus, tax cuts, deregulation is kind of our only hope to manage this transition. I, I know you're generally pessimistic, but are you a little encouraged that maybe the impact of the tax cuts on business is a little better than than you thought or than it might have been? Unless the market sells off. Well, this is the thing. <laughs> this is the problem yeah. now is we're in this catch-22. Let me just say this. I, I think it's a blessing that we go into this situation with the administration we have now that's so pro-business, that's out there slashing regulation, that's enacted this tax cut, and hopefully is going to go back to the well and try to do more, um, let's see, once they get the immigration right. stuff and uh, whatnot taken care of. But I, I think that is a huge positive. It, it, at least the White House isn't operating in contravention from what we're trying to achieve here. Now we've right. got someone on our team. But like Maria said, I think the biggest risk now to the economy is the stock market. If we have a repeat of a 2008 sort of collapse in financial assets, that's going to blow back to the economy hard. So, th so that will eliminate the savings for the tax plan, you believe? Well, just a 10 percent sustained decline in the stock market, the wealth effect from that eliminates $100 billion in spending. That's the tax cut increase for the year right there.